Well hello and welcome back to Math 2 UK and you can probably tell in my voice I'm feeling a bit chesty got a bit of a cold coming after the recent climb up Ben Nevis wow what an experience and there's a video coming out on that soon but first we've got our fishing video and where am I? I'm back on Kellett Lake and I'm really looking forward to this it's a three day session or three night session should I say I'm here till Friday morning and I'm really looking forward to it it's a bit blowy, it's a bit wet and it's a bit windy but it doesn't make any difference. I've been looking forward to this for some long, long time now. Three days. I've got all the gear. I've got my big bivy, got my Avid HQ with me. It can rain all it likes. It can be as windy as it wants. It doesn't make any difference to me. The only concern for me really is if it rains too much then the water level could rise considerably and I could get flooded out. Now I'm hoping that's not going to happen obviously because there's nowhere to move. <laughs> if I do then I have to go down to peg 10 which is the other side of the lake which is the only peg that doesn't flood here. Um, so if that's if that happens then that's what I have to do but I'm here for three days regardless so yeah it's great to be back out again I'm really looking forward to it uh, baits wise I'm using uh, citrus winter baits um, they're the Nash ones I'll show you now I'm using Ronnie rigs I've got two pop-ups and one bottom bait and let's have a look let's go down there and have a look at my rigs um, I'm using quite a large hook actually I'm using the size 4 it's quite big for this um, venue, but I'm still going to use it, give it a go. If I lose a fish or anything that happens, then I may drop the size of the hook. But let's have a quick look. So starting on the right here, I'm using these citrus cultured. They're the Nash baits. They're the 15 mil boilies, but what they've got on them is a coating. So this is uh, a coating uh, over the top of the uh, boilie itself and that's the bottom bait and basically what happens is that breaks down and releases all the flavors and that immediately in the area that's the plan that's the tactic with those um, on here we've got the simple citrus 15 mil pop-ups and they've got little enhancer in them I'll just show you that now, if you have a look inside, there's a little bottle in there you spray on your baits as well, just to beef them up a bit before you drop them in the water. And that's it, the only other thing I've got is a bit of dark matter putty. And they're all on stiff rigs, except this one, which is on a hair rig. I also have a kilo of citrus boilies as well, uh, 15 mils. Just, I ain't gonna throw a lot of bait in this session at all. It's not a good time of year to be lobbing loads of baiting, so that should do for you the next three days. I do have some pellet with me as well, but I'll see whether I need to use that or not later on. So that's it, not a lot of bait, but that's my tactic for this weekend. I do have with me, just in case all else fails, I have my XO, Hinders XO pop-ups as well. Um, one of my favorite baits but I thought I'd give these a try That's it, all three rods are in. It's just a question now of letting the line settle. It's quite windy, so there's a lot of line to pull in. So it's, it's a gradual one instead of straight away. Otherwise, I'll just pull the bait straight off the off its spot. So it might take a, a little while just to get the line settled. Here we're set up. 
usual script, loads of room. That's why I brought the big bivvy, because if it turns on me, I've got all the room I need in the world. I'm not bivvy bound in a tiny bivvy. And also, I've got the table and someone's litter, which is nice. So here we are, that's it, I'm all set up now. I'll just keep adjusting those lines every couple of minutes until they're nice and tight. And that's me done. I do like Kellett Lake. It is one of my favorite lakes. It's, uh, it's not an easy lake for some, although the chap over there has had six on, his last, on this session, so it's very good. And there's a couple of 30s come out as well recently off this peg. So, fingers crossed, let's just see how it goes. Maybe do have been a bit closer to the bank. We'll see, we'll, we'll, give, it a, we'll give it a time, we'll, we'll see how it goes, but I'm not, I may need to go a little bit further out, but let's just say I'm quite happy where they are at the moment but I may push a bit closer. Anyway, that's it. Time to relax. Maybe get a brew on with some special milk. <laughs> I thought I had a bit of a nightmare. You know when you're sure you've left something behind and I couldn't find it and I think I must have left it behind because obviously I've recharged the batteries and that was my receiver for the uh, alarms because the ATTs, they don't make a noise. You need your receiver. I thought I'd left that behind, so... <sighs> it's not far for me to travel, but it's the buggerance of it all, having to go back and pick it up again, or if my darling wife would be so kind to go and bring it for me. But luckily, I found it. It was in the food bag. And now it's on. <laughs> now that's interesting. That was definitely a liner between me and my right hand rod which is the culture pop-up sorry culture bottom bait that bottom just lifted right up then that looks more like a liner than anything else because nothing else is happening with it good got me excited already and it's only been in the water 10 minutes Come on, come on, let's have a fishy fishy. I'd be really impressed if those culture baits work. Really impressed. But like I say, I am light fishing, not a lot of bait. Citrus baits as well, so it's winter bait. It is a dedicated winter bait. Let's just see how we get on. Now I did actually test the um, these cultures in a, in a jug on my windowsill for 24 hours to see what happened. and. Within about 10 minutes of it being in the water, which is tap water, so it's about the same temperature as, as maybe this, maybe a little bit colder, I don't know. And you could see the stuff leaching from it. And 24 hours later, the, the water it was contained in was completely like, like, a, like a very light orange, or orange, depends on how you say that. So it, it definitely leached flavors out into the water constantly for some time um, what I did expect to happen was the outer case to break off and leave crumb around the boilie that's what I was expecting to see but that didn't happen and it only started coming away when I touched it so if something goes past it it, it maybe will break it off but as it sat undisturbed in its location the outer case didn't didn't break down enough to crumble it, it stayed around the boiling but it was it was soft and yeah filming wise I've got pretty much everything with me I've got my uh, drone I've got my GoPro so if the weather turns really bad I can still take the camera outside whereas this one I'm filming on now I, I can't take that outside at all but if it does turn bad, I've got my GoPro with me. I can sit that outside, still film, regardless of the weather. And obviously the drone, if, if, it, if the wind just drops off a little bit, I can pop that up, have a good look around. I'm not necessarily going to be looking for fish. Just get some ambience of the area, and something, something in, the, in the video which is a little different. So, yeah, looking forward to that. Let's hope we can get out. <laughs> and the drone. Bleeding hell, you can't get away from the buggers. Go on, bugger off.
Come on. Look at that. Under me rods. Come on. Shoot. So we're a few hours in now. I've had one drop back so far. Um, I think it was diving ducks, if I was to be honest. But I don't know that. I don't know that they were in the area, but I don't know whether they was or not. So yeah, there's only there's only me in this section now. Everyone else is gone. There is, however, two bivvies still over on the uh, pegs nine, eight and nine, I think they are. So in the other bowl, uh, I think they're due to go tonight, but they're, they're miles away from me anyhow. So I've got the place to myself. I can spread out. As far as I'm aware at this moment in time, nobody else is booked in. So tomorrow, if I don't get any joy, and tomorrow I'm going to leave everything as it is. There's no point going around putting more bait in. There's just no need. I'm just going to leave those pop-ups and uh, bottom baits where they are, especially for tonight. Um, if I don't get any joy, I can spread my wings out a bit in the morning, can't I? Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm really going to keep the bait to an absolute minimum. Uh, that's how I'm going to pan it out. <laughs> Cat bites and fishing bloggers. Spaghetti bolognese is now served. That's, that's dinner made. Have it with a beer, of course. Tiny Rebel, Cali Pale, which is Juicy Pale L, 5%. I came in a box that Mr. P left in my car from our Ben Nevis walk. So I'm going to uh, drink them. <laughs> so let me have my dinner in peace. And I shall catch up with you just shortly. Spaghetti bolognese. We don't do pot noodles around here. Hmm. Let me tell you a little bit about Ben Nevis. Now, although I have a video coming out on that, it'll be after I've released this one when you see the Ben Nevis video, although I've done it the other way around. Um, it was minus 16 on top of the hill. It was good going up the, uh, below the snow line, really good. We made great time. We had some different gear with us this time. We brought some uh, micro spikes, which are like uh, baby crampons for want of a better word. <coughs> well, that's exactly what they are. Um, we had all the gear we needed, really. We had everything, GPS, two GPSs, in fact. And off we went. As we got within 100 meters height of the summit, uh, we lost the track and the visibility was going so we decided that we weren't gonna go to the summit and when you watch the villa you'll see why uh, it wasn't a good decision to make to keep going so we decided no and you have to be prepared in those situations to do that you can't just say we're going to the top and that's that. Uh, that that's just not the way to do it you have to be sensible about it and the reason i say that is became very apparent the following day because somebody died on top of that mountain just 24 hours later um, killed by an avalanche from what I, what I gather they came up the north face and they were wiped out by an avalanche and this fella fell 600 meters uh, which is a real real shame and no doubt this guy was an experienced walker climber whatever you want to call it but it catches you out like that and things go wrong and when they go wrong up on top of those mountains they go wrong horrifically and for that poor chap that's exactly what happened so when you get to a moment where you're starting to doubt whether it's a good idea to continue or not you should already be making the decision to turn around because if you're out if you're doubting yourself your abilities and everything else then you shouldn't go any further and we made the call there was other people there i think there was about two or three that went up ahead of us Apparently they got to the summit, there was a gang coming up behind, 
Uh, one of the guys, uh, when we said to them, look, no, we're turning around, it's not safe. He just said, can I come back with you? Mm, yeah, of course you can, mate. Yeah, so he came back down the mountain with us. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a hell of an experience. It's a real shame for that fella who died the following day. I'm glad I did what I did. I'm glad we made the call that we made. And we went back down into Ben Nevis and we drank gin and tonics and vodka and cokes and God knows what for the rest of the evening, sat next to long fires. I know I'd rather be. So there you go. I'm not gonna harp on too much about it. That's as much as I'm gonna say in this video about it, but look out for the video. It should be, uh, it should be a good video. If you're interested in anything like that, or even if you're interested in fishing and you've never seen my channel before, click the subscribe button and keep your eye out for the post. Mm. Now, excuse my attire. The reason I'm filming is because in the last five minutes I've had one drop back and I've had definitely one mistake. Now, I wasn't 100% happy with the bottom bait, so the way I've got it presented. I wasn't, I wasn't totally happy with it. And I think I'm going to have to change that in the morning because that was definitely a mistake. Because the line's been tightened right up, whereas my other one could be a liner causing a drop back. I don't know. But yeah, I'm definitely going to have to look at my rigs because I've definitely missed a bite. Definitely missed one. It's picked it up. It spat it out, but it's gone some distance with it, so so the rig hasn't worked. So I'm not happy with that. I'm not going to do anything about it now. As you can hear, it's pouring down. I'm just going to live with it, uh, and chances of me getting back on that spot, clipped up or not, at night in this wind, isn't going to help. Now it isn't the wind that's caused it because. I know my rigs, I know my setup. It takes a lot for a wind to make that beep. Here we go again. Now that is definitely, definitely not the wind causing that. Definitely not. Good morning, a very uneventful evening. Unfortunately, but sun's just come up. I've been watching the surface, and although it's still quite ripply, what I've noticed that right over in the hole, there's a deep hole on Kellett. I just sat there watching the swans on the far bank, and I noticed a slick come up from the big hole. So, whether somebody's been putting baits in there um, recently, I don't know, couldn't tell you. But it definitely, definitely was disturbed and, and the slick did come up, shot across, I know, followed the wind. So I just reeled straight in and dropped one of my pop-ups straight on top of it because why wouldn't I? That, that signs of fish, signs of movement. I know it's in the deep hole, but that's where the slick come up. Now I know there's cats in here and it could have been a cat, but I don't mind cats either. But I thought, Got nothing to lose by trying it. Yeah, so I'm gonna bring in the other two rods now. I'm gonna change over that pop, the bottom baits. Uh, I'm just gonna put it on a different rig. I don't like, I'm, I'm not confident with the rig that I put on it. And then I'm just gonna get this other rod, the center rod, tie it to the bank on the far bank. And that's my plan. I'm gonna try and do all that before it pisses down on me. <laughs> so let's get it in. Let's get it in! I knew I'd been had last night. I knew it. <sighs> so that now has gone to a very much more traditional hook link so it's just your it's just your basic hook link and much lighter hook as well I've gone down a size and a much lighter hook so I'm, I'm hoping that might make a difference I, I, I think this other rig was 
just a little bit overcomplicated and it didn't need to be. So that's why I've changed it. So we'll get this on. Get out. Well, after some consideration, I decided that I would actually put the drone up. Now, everything does look like it's nice and calm, but it's not, I can assure you. It's about a good 10, 15 mile an hour wind and I was crapping myself. However, I wanted to get the shot. I wanted to get this particular shot. That's well cool, good colors. Well impressed with this drone. Um, as you can see, I, I've never actually seen clear water from this point of view before and maybe quite a lot of you wouldn't have done too. So this is why I wanted to get it up and have a, and have a look around. Now I do and am using a Polaroid filter. So when you are 90 degrees to the light source, you will not see the reflection so much in the water. It reduces it massively. Just like now and that clear bit coming in on Kellett now because it's the perfect angle. Now, if you change the angle, you will start to see reflections. But as always, didn't really intend on looking for fish. I just wanted to go out with a drone and practice because I'm, I'm a relatively new flyer. But look, if you look straight down, look, you can see there's a car, there's some carp here, little shoal. Not at the perfect angle for that, but you can still see them through the, through the Polaroid lens. But if I turn and face towards the light source, the reflection becomes a lot more and you see a lot less. Again, pointing towards the light source, a lot of reflection. But a really good shot of the Kellett Light and Clearwater setup. Well, I was pretty keen to get the drone back, so eventually I turned around and made my way back. There is a lot more to see of this and a lot more fish finding later on. Right, so a few hours ago I put one in that pit when I seen a slip come up. But nothing's happened. And I'm not, didn't really want to fish in there, but because that was the only sign of fish that I've seen, I went for it. So what I'm going to try now is a different bait. And this bait is dedicated to Paulie, who was on my site a few weeks ago. And he totally recommended a particular type of bait. So I'm going to give that a go. It's only a pop-up, I'm still going to give it a go. Now, the advice given was, on its own, nothing. Just pop the bait out on its own and just leave it there. 
So that's exactly what I'm going to do. But this time I'm going to go back on the original peg, which is over by the gravel pit over there. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll zoom the camera in at the location and I'll get my GoPro on the head and see if we can uh, get an accurate, really close up to the bank shot. All right, let's give it a go. Well, you got to have it, haven't you? Sausage, bacon, eggs, beans and black pudding. I mean, what else can you have? What else can you have for a diet? <laughs> well, as we head into our second night, uh, the light's starting to go. You won't see that so well on this camera because it is a good lens on this camera. So it looks a lot lighter in the background than it actually is. However, I've not had a sausage all day. That's not strictly true, I've just had two. Uh, not a knock, nothing. Uh, the lads that have turned up haven't had anything either. It's a difficult lake, it always has been. Um, I did find out that the chap who caught six earlier was uh, fishing with maggots during the day and then going on to bottom baits during the evening because of the ills taking all the bait. So he was, I think he was using the Medusa rig, I think, I think. So that may be something for the future to bring along, maybe some maggots. Uh, I'm not going to move my baits, I'm, I'm going to keep them where they are. I, I'm happy with the presentation, I'm happy with the locations and spots because I've caught off those spots previously and as you all know it's once you usually find your spots and that's the ones you fish to and stick to and, and I am doing. So I shouldn't really have any problems. There's plenty of time yet, I'm not, I'm not giving up the go, you never do when you're fishing do you? But it's just, it's just nice to be away and just nice to be out. I'm really enjoying this. It's been really relaxing uh, and, and it's just exactly what I needed. So until something happens, I'm going to turn the camera off, sit back and enjoy some more of doing absolutely nothing. <sighs> Although work have been mithering me today. I've had about 10 calls and did answer one. I had to sort a couple of things out, but I didn't really want to. I did it just because I have a responsibility and there's no escaping that, no matter where I am. So that's that. See you later. Don't mind if I do, see? Probably the only fish you'll see this week. <laughs> oh, I hope he's hungry. Yeah, it's too soon to your sport. <laughs> well, it is about half past ten, and those rods haven't moved for two days. Oh well, I'm in the right spot, so I'm, I'm doing everything. I'm not bothered about that, to be honest with you. I'm absolutely having a whale of the time. I'm, I'm watching YouTube. I'm chilling out and relaxing. And, and, I've got a little special treat for myself. Don't get me wrong, I'm not going to do the whole thing. But, I have got a bottle of. Glen Murnock from the Isle of Islay. You can get it in Aldi. And I know for a fact that's going to taste really peaty. I've never tried it before. Here's the bottle here. And although I am going to treat myself to a little nippy sweetie, I know it's going to taste lovely. So that's my special treat for me, my relaxing treat. I just open it now, actually. Here we go. Like I say, don't think I'm going to be polishing this off. 
Oh, there's a cork stopper as well. Let's clear the pallet slightly. Let's have a good sniff. Oh, Glenf no. Lefroig. This is made on the same island as Lefroig. The Isle of Isle or Islay, whichever you want to pronounce it. Excuse me, I'm just going to take a quick sniff from the bottle just to let you know. Well, what can I say? I love my whiskies. I'm not a connoisseur by any means. But you put that and Lefroig next to each other, side by side, and you tell me which is which. This is really smooth. Aldi do fantastic. Sounds like an advert for Aldi, doesn't it? Aldi do fantastic bargains. And I think this came in at 16 quid compared to the 25 pound for Lefroig. Oh, this is tremendous, absolutely tremendous. I'm gonna pour myself a glass of that in a minute. Continue watching a bit of YouTube. And that's me settled for the night. And like I say, I'm really chillaxed. This is the first time in, in months that I've really relaxed and it's taken me a couple of days and I'm just getting into the zone right now. I mean, there is a potential for me to stay another day. Well, I don't have to go home on Friday. I don't have to. I've got the bait, I've got the food. I've got the beer. I could stay if I wanted to. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. If I, if I get a bite or some sort of action, which I've got absolutely nothing in the last 24 hours, then I may consider staying, but, which I can do. <sighs> anyway, back to YouTube. That's my whiskey sampling done. Right, see you later. I'm, I'm proper chilled out now, proper chilled out. I love it, I am loving it. I think I just banked it. Yeah, I just banked that. So as you can see, my tactic here was quite clear. It was to uh, put it in the tree so I could get it and hand launch it from here. <laughs> I know what you're gonna be saying to me. Why didn't I clip up? And that's a very, very good question. And the answer is quite simple. I don't have mistakes with me. Still, I get to put the bait exactly where I want it now. Which is there. A buffoon put them in on its own so I put it in when I eventually got it in the right spot because I cast it into the trees and then instinctively I got a handful of boilies 
and put them in. Why did I do that? So, into my final 24 hours now, and last night, absolutely nothing, nothing at all. Not a beep, no liners, it was quite a calm evening as well, uh, quite disappointing. However, still relaxed. What I may do is just bring, just bring things in just a little bit, and maybe too far out maybe too tight to the bank don't know so um, as a final tactic for today I'm just gonna bring another rod length towards me and give that a try as I pull back the lead I'm just gonna feel as it as it goes and where it starts to drop off that's where I'm gonna I'm gonna fish I'm gonna clip up at that point and I'm gonna fish that so it's uh, desperate tactics maybe but it is what I'm gonna try the weather is not raining at the moment, but it's due to rain any second now. It's trying to. Any joy? <laughs> yeah, it, it was a struggle for you, wasn't it, to get out there? They're doing you all right? Fish? <laughs> no, not yet. Trying, trying. I've been up tight to the bank, but nothing, nothing really. No, is it not showing? No, not at all, no. He's had more that top end. Uh, he's, he's had what? He's had more that top end. Oh, right, okay. It seems to be the height of Peg seem to be doing the business recently, doesn't it? Yeah, well, Peg six and five have fished well. Yeah. So let's do a little bit of a comparison, shall we? Let's have a look at the before and after bait. So that's your cultured, gone in, and that's it coming out. So you can see the difference there of the amount of added material on the outside of the bait. So the, it does leach its stuff. I mean, there's, there's barely nothing left on this one after 24 hours, but or maybe 18 hours but yeah that's, that's quite a difference in size that so it has been dropping or giving off those flavors in and around that bait although they haven't worked that is still an example of the difference in sizes from the cultures they're a tough bait I say that they don't give up any space easy Three good to go. Oh, well, my lens is slightly foggied up. Anyway, so what have I done? Well, I decided to put a little bit more bait out. Now, in the three days that I would have been here, I have put a maximum of one kilo of boilies out, which some people may say that's an awful lot for winter session. And maybe it is, but this is a predominantly hungry lake and they like to see lots of bait. So I've been quite skimpish. I have been very, very tight on the bait, but I've just finished off that kilo on the three spots now. So 
that's between the three spots, so that's a maximum of one kilo. And, and that's about it. Well, that is it. I've brought the rods in another rod length from the back. I got a sneaky suspicion that I may just be a little too tight to the bank. So now I've, I'm definitely a rod length, rod and a half length back off the bank now. So maybe that might have an effect. I don't know, I don't know. All I can do is keep trying. I've not over baited, so I've not spreaded bait everywhere. I've put the bait I know diving ducks have been having it, the swans have been having it in the shallower areas, so I know that whatever I've put out so far is probably gone. So I don't feel like I've overbaited, I don't feel like there's just bait everywhere, because there isn't. A bit damp after that one, because although you can't hear the rain, it's that really fine rain that soaks you through. I, I can't help but laugh at myself. I've made a couple of mistakes. But every time I throw the bet out, I'm like, yeah, that's definitely going to work. That's definitely going to go. Hey, go that one. Hey, go that one. I, I, there's no problem with that one. It's going to go. It's going to go. Every time, every single time I do it. I guess if you didn't do that, there's no point coming fishing. But it does make me laugh. Because in another eight hours time, I'll be like, it hasn't worked again. <laughs> A couple of things I want to talk about. And one of them being this little lamp. Now, People that follow the channel would have seen this lamp before. It's the Go Zero Mini Lighthouse. Now, this lamp has an uncanny ability to, if you haven't seen it before, it has uh, a dial on the front which indicates the battery. And as you can see, it's on four bars, four bars. And if you also notice, that light is completely lit up, but the back side isn't. But if I turn it the other way, you should see it a bit better that way. You can up the brightness half of it, or you can go full whack and turn it on that way. Now on that, you'll get about four hours max. But if you click it to its first light level there, which is very dim, it's very much like a candle. Now when I used to, when I first started cap fishing, I loved using candles. I just love the ambience of it. And you'll notice that light is a warm light. It's not a cold white light. It's a much, much warmer light. And that has been on for at least 24 hours, two nights. Maybe, maybe more than, maybe even 30 hours. Because as soon as it goes dark, I just turn that on to its lightest. And it's just like having a candle in the background and you can see around the bivy and you don't need your head torch on and it's really really good lamp and I, and I rate it and if you if you are a candle person or you've got lamps and all sorts of stuff then these can be a little bit expensive but to go into my third night and still have four bars is quite amazing for a little little lamp little torch whatever you want to call it and you've got the power should you need to boost that up as well it's, it's chargeable it charges itself it has its own little charge lead on the side so you just plug that into a little power pack and away you go if you do need to charge it up now if you're going to put it on the uh, higher settings you 100% will need a power pack to go with that um, of which I've got and I charge all my phones and everything else off that as well so it works really really well so that's, that's a good tip from me if you do, if you are looking for a good uh, table lamp for inside your bivvy just for that ambient light throughout the night so when you wake up in the middle of the night you're not fumbling around for stuff on your bivvy table you can see exactly where everything is it's not overpowering it doesn't blind you it doesn't keep you awake it's just real soft light perfect perfect so that's that one out of the way the other one <coughs> and this is quite a sad one for me my Ford Focus ST has gone I've sold it and I've replaced it with <laughs> Dacia Duster Extreme. They couldn't be any further apart, could they? They couldn't be any further apart. However, I do like my Duster. I had one a couple of years ago. Uh, well, when I left one company and joined another. About three years ago, I, had, I, I bought a little Duster, four before, uh, for running around in fishing. 
and I, I quite liked it, but it was the older shape and the older model. And, and there was a few things that weren't perfect because it is a dust at the end of the day. So uh, my next car I bought then was the ST and I drove that around for two years and it was awesome. I loved it. It was the best car I've ever driven. It stuck to the road like glue. It was like it's on tracks. But I could only just get my fishing gear in it. Just, only just. And if I needed my bait boat with me as well, then I really started to struggle to get everything in. So it, it wasn't ideal. <coughs> also, um, the, the ST was very low to the ground. So if I was to come to my local fisheries, the only car park I could really go in was the one just here. If I was to go around the back to Kent's Bank, I couldn't make it because it was too potholy. And that thing doesn't like anything except flat roads. So the car, from that point of view, was difficult to take fishing because you couldn't get to certain swims, you couldn't get to certain areas because of the ground level. And again, that was costing me some fishing. But I did love it. So, looking around for a new car, I was offered the brand new ST that's coming out. It's just been released. I was gonna, I was half tempted to get it because I really enjoyed driving that car. But I just knew in the back of my mind that buying another ST just meant that I would have struggled again. So I decided Although I, uh, I, there were a few issues with the duster, I went for that. It's all black. I've got the shark fin put on it, got front sensors put on it. It's come, because it's the extreme version, it comes with the black alloys. And it looks quite cool. If a duster can look cool, then that looks cool. I'll show you later. <coughs> oh, jeepers. I'll show you later. Uh, when I'm packing up tomorrow morning, perhaps, or if it clears. So yeah, it was uh, it was a hard decision to make to give up the ST. Uh, I, I really loved it, but I found packing my gear into this car this weekend, not this weekend, this week, very easy. I just threw everything in and there was still ample room for more gear if I wanted to put it in. So from that point of view alone, it's more me. It's a 4x4 as well, so I can go anywhere. Paid dividends uh, when we went to Scotland earlier in the month, or the end of last year, should I say. Um, in the snow and the ice, yeah, it certainly made a difference having the 4 before. Uh, the potholes on the Scottish roads were bad and I, it just cruised over them as if they weren't there. So I'm happy with it, but I am disappointed that it, it's, I mean, when you put your foot down, there is nothing there. Whereas the ST, you'll be in the back of your seat. But uh, no, there's, there's, there's no power in it. It is what it is. But I do like it. To a degree, I do like it, yeah you would have seen the drone up and about now so that would have been out and about I had a short period yesterday where I could fly it so I did just before the uh, wind and rain picked up again now it is an impressive little drone it's a DJI Mini 3 Pro there are various versions there's the Mini 2 and there's also the Mini 3 which without the Pro now the Mini the new the latest version which is the Mini 3 that don't have as many whistles and bells as the Mini 3 Pro. So be careful. You may get a Mini 3 drone, which is excellent, brilliant drone, but it doesn't have all the little special tricks that the 3 can do. So be mindful if you're out to look out for a drone. Just be mindful about what you're buying. You might save yourself a few hundred quid, but then you might lose some of the abilities to do some of the trick shots and whatever it can do. Now I'm learning. So that drone is completely new to me. So it's only been up a half a dozen times. So I'm learning it and, and it is scary. And I'm gonna bring out a video about that because there are so many videos out there showing you the Mini 3 Pro and they're very, very good. And they're done by professional people who have beautiful backdrops and they take you out into Northern Ireland and all over the world and some of the footage they get are absolutely amazing but there are certain things that they don't tell you and those are the things that people like me really need to know there are one or two videos out there which explain you 
the anxiety that you can get by flying a drone, and which you do, because it's such an investment, and and it's so easily lost in the water or anywhere else. So you just got to be really careful that. But there's a sequence you have to go through to get you up and flying, and uh, I, I'm going to make a little video which consolidates all that, so as that if you're like me, and you've just got yourself something like a drone, and you're concerned about certain issues and certain things then hopefully it will explain it. So keep your eye out for that video. The weather over the last three days has been pretty bad to be fair. Uh, you, well I have been pretty much bivy bound, hence this large bivy that I brought. And someone did ask me recently to give a bit of an update because I mentioned when I first bought this bivy about three years ago, uh, that you could treat it if you need to. And uh, a little bit of an update so, I'm going to give a little bit of an update. Now, this bivy I'm sat in is the uh, Avid HQ. And it comes with this cotton inner layer. And there's no winter skin as such. The outer skin is the winter skin as well. So you, when it comes, all this has come separate. And you have to uh, put it all together when you put it up the first time. But once you've put it all together, you don't have to take it down. You, you know, it, it can stay together. And it folds up really easy, and it folds up into the bag nice. It is a heavy bivy. It's probably two plus. It, you know, you could easily get two people in here and, and a little bit of room too, so. My thoughts on it after three years of using it, I think it is an excellent bivy. I don't usually plug gear or anything like that. And it's not about plugging, it's about somebody wanting an update so here's the update I've enjoyed using it I think it's a great bivy once you've figured out how to set it up and put it up then it's not bad at all it was quite windy when I came here and setting it up I thought may be an issue on my own but I've got used to it now and it goes up just like any other bivy bivy? and it goes up just like any other bivy no, there's no condensation because of the cotton lining. Uh, the doors and vents and windows are brilliant. The fact that the whole drop, the back can drop down. There's a window in it if you want to do that as well. You know, there's so many variations that you can you can use with this bivy. It makes it very very usable all around the world. I think. You know, places like uh, France when we go to France. I haven't take, took it to France yet. Uh, I took my um, a much older bivy last year uh, although I didn't take my <laughs> didn't take my rain, rain skin with me and we needed it if you've watched that video we needed it there was a storm came through and it took Dave's bivy away we had, we had to go find Dave's bivy yeah so it was uh, it, it was a it was a bad storm but this this bivy I really really like it yes it was expensive I think it was 500 pound I paid for it that's a lot of money, but I really like it. It's it's practical, it's got everything that I need. I need loads of room because every time I go fishing, Dave will always end up sat in there anyhow. But in situations like where you are bivy bound, you've got the room to spread out. And I've got loads of room over there, loads of bed. It's just loads of room. That's what you need, especially when it's bad weather. So for a winter bivy, it's not a cold bivy. It's, uh, it hasn't been exactly freezing temperatures, but it's not going to make much difference between this bivy and any other bivy. It's got double layers. It's two layers, so it won't make a difference. So there's, I don't think there's a cold bivy. You, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't think you can... There's a bivy that you would say, oh, yeah, it's a really warm bivy. Well, any bivy's warm if you drop it down and put a heater on, as long as it isn't a gas one, like that poor lad who got killed earlier this... Well, later last year. You know, I mean, as long as you ventilate, you should be fine. But no, it's got all the it's got all the whistles and bells and tricks. And I'm I'm a fan of bivvies with hoods. Uh, that little bit extra, I I like that. I don't like the straight down from the, from the roof straight down. It just lets all the rain in. <coughs> so yeah, treating it. It's not ready for treating yet. I don't need to treat it yet. It's it's coping with it very fine. Uh, if I was to take it somewhere sunny, like France, I would definitely treat it prior going to France. And what I mean by that is UV protection. 
no matter what bivy you put up, if you leave a bivy up for long periods in the sun, it will degrade the material. And if you buy something like a, a Fab Seal, which Fab Seal Gold comes with a UV protector, then you're definitely prolonging the life of your bivy. You're out of skin, definitely 100%, 100%. And it's not ready for it yet, but when should that time come? I go and buy the paint on stuff. It's not not the spray. I never use the spray. I don't I don't find the spray very uh, good. I just use a simple paintbrush, and I paint the entire skin. And then you know you're getting all the seams. You're getting a good coating on it, and you're doing the job. And it may cost you fifteen pound for the uh, Febsil, but or Fabsil, but you know you're getting a good coating on it and you're looking after your equipment which is important because they are investments and you don't want to take this bivy out and then all of a sudden your skin starts ripping because the sun's got to it so there you go because you are reliant totally on the outer skin there's no skin to go over the top of it afterwards this is that's it so you've got to, to look after what you've got so yes if you want an update about this bivy i'm going to give it a massive thumbs up from me it works for me. It does exactly everything I need it to do. It's multi-use. It's plenty of configurations. You just got to figure out how to put it up. Keep flying. There's a bloke behind me with a shotgun. <laughs> Keep flying. <laughs> ha! I've just seen my first sign of a carp. And... We're right in the middle of the lake. I'm going to stick to my guns. But if I do keep seeing more movement in the middle of the lake, that's exactly where I'm going to fish, which is unusual for here. So first signs, two days in. Well, I know where the fish are now. <sighs> I got the drone up. Big shoulder fish. Did I? Did I fire my rods over to that? 
too bloody right I did. I'm the only one back on this lake again. Everyone else is gone. Hence why I can cast over there. If somebody turns up in that peg, fair dues, fair dues. It is what it is. Do I tell him if I see somebody walking? Do I do I do the right thing and tell them that in that swim they're right across the bank? Yeah, I will do. I will do that. I, I'll make a promise. If if somebody turns up and wants to fish that. I'll tell them exactly what I've seen with the drone, and I know that's only fair. You know, give them the best possible chance. Uh, there was a fish over in my swim, um, just the one. Uh, I was absolutely on the money. I'm in the right spot. <laughs> what I have done though this time, I noticed when I was flying that there was a clear patch, quite a big clear patch, just to the left of my right hand peg. Uh, but a good rock oh, bugger off swan but a good two rods out at least two rods away from the bank so what I've done I've brought it right in and brought it short I've dropped it in that now I know that you can spook those fish quite easily so I'm, I'm pretty sure that I've spooked them off those spots but give it another 10-15 minutes I'm going to send the drone back up and I'm going to see if the, if the fish have come back into that spot and if they have that gives me the best chance and I know it's it's like using bait boats in it. Is it cheating? Yes, bloody right it is cheating. I, I, I don't deny it at all. I'm not denying it, but I'm gonna use the facilities that I've got to try and get a fish out of this water. Now, the only thing is, if I do catch a fish from that spot now, I'm not gonna feel like I've earned it so much. Does that make any sense? I'm gonna feel like I've cheated. That's just the way it is. Or I may just not show that drone footage at all. Get off. Right, I've just checked again. I'll show you the footage. They're moving back into that area. So they do get spooked out, but they like to keep coming back to that area. That's definitely one, definitely one for the future to keep your eye on. But that's quite interesting, really. I've got two rods over in that area now. I can't do any more than that. Two pop-ups, two winter baits. I can't do any more than that. Mr. Cheater, Mr. Cheater. One thing you need to remember when you do come fishing and you do have a drone is that you can't just turn up, rock up and throw your drone in the air and expect that you're not going to piss people off. You can do and you will do if you don't get permission to do it and at least you don't speak to the guys to your left and right to make sure that they're happy with you doing it. But more importantly, you can't fly a drone on anyone's land unless you have permission. So bear that in mind. This isn't one of those places where you can just rock up and start chucking drones in the air. It's you need special permission or you need permission from the landowner it's one of the rules i'm afraid so bear that in mind okay Although the picture won't do it justice, that is the uh, lamp. So, just ambient light, candlelight, but well, 400 hours worth. Uh oh, if you've seen this, you know very well. I didn't get a fish last night. Well, that's all there is to it. Uh, gonna probably see it till around about dinner time today. Uh, I've just been up. My rods are in. Not see. No rods. No rods. 
We're over there on the bivvy. That's why the swans are anything I've buggered off, but I'm not buggering off yet. Yeah, I've just been up, use the ablutions, come back. It's that time where I'm gonna go to my Hinders XOs. Despite all the equipment and all the technology that you can have, it still doesn't make you a better angler. I knew the carp were over there and I just threw the baits on top of it, but it still didn't happen. So it makes no difference having the drone, even on top of the fish, they still didn't take my baits. So there's nothing I can do about that. I'm not disappointed, fully completely disappointed. I've absolutely loved it. It's been a great three days, you know, and. and and I ain't knocking it at all. I really, really needed it. And I'm so pleased I came here. I've had the place <coughs> pretty much to myself. All the way through, there's been a few 24 hour lads. There has been one fish out since I've been here. And that was in the bowl. Uh, that was one cap. I don't know how big it was. That's it, last cast. So this is how it goes. I popped the drone up this morning, just having, oh, I wasn't actually looking for fish. I was technically just gonna get some shots in along the lake. So I flew the drone down to here, down to the bowl, turned around and I noticed something in the water and it was the white, white fish that they've got in here, about 30 pounder. Went down, had a closer look, and there they all were, just in this area here. Now, call me old fashioned and a bit of a fool, but I can't sit on those rods where my bivy was, waiting for the fish to come back up. So I grabbed my pod and came down, stuck my pod on this little pond here. Now, I've got one on e each end, so one coming in, one coming in from that way one in the middle so 20 minutes ago the fish were here now whether they've gone that way or whether they've gone that way at this moment in time I couldn't tell you and I probably have disturbed them by casting in and doing what I what, what you normally do but if they've gone that way brilliant because they, they'll come back I just can't sit on my rods knowing that the fish are down here and it was a big shoal let me show you the footage and you'll see exactly what I mean <laughs> Now you've seen that footage, what would you do in this case? Would you do the same as me? Would you just grab your pod, get yourself down here? What would you do? Because I know exactly what I'd do, and I've done it. So, there you go. I know people don't like it, people don't like the drones, they think it's cheating, yeah, I get all that. But I still can't sit there knowing that the fish are down here. It just doesn't make any sense to me.
I've put the bait, I kept the drone up and I recast right next to the fish. They didn't spook. Just, he actually started to turn around and have a look at what I put in, but I still can't make the buggers eat it. So I can't get them to take it. Now, no matter what you do, no matter what equipment you got, it makes no difference. If they're not taking it, they're not taking it. There's nothing you can do about that. But one of the things I have learned very quickly using the drone is that you become despondent very quickly. Because when the drone's up, you can see them. And you think, brilliant, I'm on the spot. And as soon as the drone comes down again, you don't know whether they're in the water or not. And you can't see when it's choppy like this. So you're constantly wanting to put the drone back up again to see if they're still there, which... It, it, it's, it's not so much fun. So although it's good to have it, what I've learned very quickly is that you do want to rely on it a lot more than any warmanship. And that's one of the cons I would say about using it is that you can confirm there are fish in your water, but if, you've, if this place was full and you sent the drone up and you could see that there was no fish in your swim, you would become very spawn very quickly and be like oh, I'm never gonna catch a fish because I've got no fish in my swim whereas normally you wouldn't know that and it's the excitement so you lose a bit of that so it's not always a great thing and I, I know on the very first fishing session I've learned that you can use it too much and it's not a good thing which is quite interesting because I thought it was the opposite effect but it's not it's actually a double-edged sword if you can see them, great. If you're on, if they're in your swim, great. But if they're not, it's not great, and it's it's not not good. So there you go. It's quite an interesting fact. I thought. Well, I've learned that very quickly. So I'm pretty much heading into the end of my session now, and I have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm proper chilled out now, which is where I needed to be. But the weather's going to change again this afternoon, and the rain's coming in. It's, it's spitting on us a bit now. So I need to make sure I'm packed away before I get too wet. Well, I can't make the buggers feed. I need to start packing up now. So I think it's time to reel in. Yes, it's a blank. And I'm not really that bothered. I've, I've really thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed myself. And I, I can't say any more than that. Time to get back to reality. Three nights sat here fishing has been amazing. And I've loved it. Every minute of it. <coughs> uh, but no, very quiet on the fish side there's always another time and don't always rely on your technology it doesn't mean you're going to catch fish more it just means you've got more technology and I probably will do a video about that because I find that an interesting subject because you get a lot of uh, bait boat haters you get a lot of people that don't like drones and you get a lot of people who prefer the more traditional fishing methods as opposed to following the technology and using the technology you've got available to you and that's quite a debate and I'm not going to debate it on this so don't comment about it on this video I will bring out another video which will open the doors for you to comment and give your opinions on whether you feel it's good or bad or whether you're indifferent so until the next time thank you for joining me for this video I hope you enjoyed my time as much as I did and uh, I'll see you in the future and thanks again to Clearwater. Cheers, bye bye. And for any of you who's interested, there's my new Dusty. Like I say, they've got a few extra added on, it's got the shark fin added on. It comes with the uh, alloy wheels as well, So, and it's all in black. Yeah, I quite like that four-wheel drive yeah 360 cameras a few whistles and bells on it but obviously it doesn't drive anything like my last vehicle but there you go that's the new that's the new motor so I'm quite happy with it